Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And this is a very special, special episode because, first of all, as you can tell, the show is much prettier than normal. <laughs> and we've got a lot of food. And we're in a very special place. We're at the Brooks Group, who happens to be the greatest PR <laughs> firm of all time. And uh, I am very fortunate to be a part of that family. And so is my lovely guest, Ingrid Hoffman, who is a huge food star. Ingrid, thank you so much for being here. Hey, I want to kiss this. Guys, you know why I think this show is really, really special? Because I'm wearing my wristband. <laughs> An so, original. An original. Mm -hmm. He gave it to me to wear. And I wonder, is it for to support my wrist from <laughs> all the thing? Thing? Right, guys? I hope. Is it going to really support me? I, I hope so. I can do a lot of lifting this way. I like yeah, it. I got my power Ooh. bracelet on here. So, Ingrid, what we have here are a lot of different ingredients, right? Yes. I mean, normally you're putting these all together and doing demonstrations and you only got two, three minutes and we have plenty of time, so I want you to relax. We're going to drink a crap load of wine together. Yes! <laughs> um, but what, what we did was we kind of put this together and you gave some ingredients and then what I kind of did was pair some things that, uh, you know, I think would go well with these different ingredients. So we've got a total variety of different um, foods here. What made you pick these ingredients? What, what does this really represent? Well, I was thinking of generally whenever you see in magazines, uh, like what we, we, you and I were discussing before coming on, sure. you will see that people will pair wines and will tell you what foods go with them. Uh, unless you're doing a, a tapas party, generally you'll never see the combination so much of Latin food to wines, right? right. Absolutely. So, you know, since what I do is Latin food, uh, I figured that it would be interesting to see what you, as a wine expert, would come up with certain of these ingredients. Of course, you know, a manchego. What, to me, if I think of wines, generally right. I'm thinking of a wine tasting party. Sure. And then, you know, little tapas, so I'll take olives, I'll take uh, Spanish cheese, I could have chorizo, um, and then, you know, jamón serrano, etc. What those are obviously all little bites that we get to eat this way. Mm -hmm. Now the other ingredients that I bought are ingredients that you don't eat necessarily by themselves, like avocado or mango, or you do. I do quite a bit. I, I eat mm -hmm. avocado by itself all day. Long. Me too. I like to mash yep. and put it on toast. However, since it is the base mm -hmm. for me, those two ingredients of so many recipes, whether sweet or savory that I thought, hey, it'd be fun to see if that is the main ingredient in whatever recipe, and it doesn't matter what the recipe is, what would be wines that kind of would, you know, go with this. So I thought that this was a fun opportunity to actually bring the food first and then, and then say, put a wine to it. You know, for, for the few, probably seven, people out there watching right now who aren't familiar with you. You know, as I've been doing more shows with guests, it's fun for me. I've noticed that the maniacs out there, they like to hear the backstory. How did you get to becoming a Food Network star? I mean, what, what, what is the rise of the great? English? First, I'm gonna get rid of the lipstick that I Why? Wow, I was gonna keep shape. that for the rest of my life. So, yeah, I don't wanna get into trouble with right, girls. We'll so go ahead. Um, you know, I started cooking when I was a kid. Literally. Loved it? I love eating. <laughs> so to me, that's where it starts. It was never about, oh my God, I want to go into the kitchen and be the best cook ever. No, it was, I want to go into the kitchen, I want to eat delicious. And that's where it all started. Mm -hmm. uh, Mom was a cordon bleu, is, thank God, is still around. Cordon bleu trained chef. God. And so she started her catering business from our home kitchen when I was a little girl. So I was always around it's lots of thing. food being prepared. And Mom has always been a life lover. My parents loved to drink, to eat, drink, eat, drink, eat, and that was what I grew up in. And needless to say, I'm a professional eater and a drinker. <laughs> <laughs> I must add that one to a tip. So when did your personal brand career start? Did you, did you, what did you, how did you land on television? How did that all Funny happen? enough, by accident. Because I had opened up a restaurant in 2002. No, what am I saying? Yeah, we're, yeah, 2002. In, um, in Miami, and uh, actually not 2002, 
it was uh, nine. No, yeah, it's around 2002. Anyway, I'm like, <laughs> you really don't want to embrace this 2002. <laughs> I go, you have an issue with 2002? But, because I'm, I'm, I get confused going back in the years. But anyway, I had opened up a restaurant with my mom in Coconut Grove in Miami called Roca. And a girlfriend one day, who actually was a personal trainer, one day decides she's going to do a, a show, a TV show. And she tells me all about it. She starts producing this little show called The Jackie Watson Show on Whammy TV. And one day says to me, hey, why don't you do a cooking segment for my show? And I figured, well, you know, if the trainer can produce TV and, you know, I sit here and cook in my restaurant and I love food, why can I not do a TV segment? Sure. Of course, I had no idea what it entailed. Sure. And had I known then, I probably would have been so scared, I would have said, there's no way I can do that. Because although it's simple, it is to cook in, you know, to cook, Cooking in TV is a completely different thing. Hold up again. It's a whole other thing. And what I know now after being trained at Food Network School, meaning from how you have to work with food on camera, nobody does it better than they. Sure. So knowing what I know now, I look back and I go, oh, I was so crazy. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. It really and it's is. funny because I had no fear because I had no idea what I was doing. You had nothing to lose. Into. Nothing to lose, exactly. Don't worry. Tell them where not My phone always <laughs> Anyway, answer. Rebecca, that's the best part. And you hung up on them just now. Guys, you just missed one of the great things that was like, she answered, then hung up. Who knows who called? Could have been like a big Jets thing. Anyway, so, so really that's true, right? I mean, when you have zero to lose, I mean, it's really like, you know, it's just, it's the real. I saw it as an adventure, and you know, I think that Did you I'm, see it as a promotion opportunity for your restaurant? Yes, right? You know, I didn't even think that far. I thought like, gee, oh, it sounds like fun, you Let's know? go do it. Got it. Let's well, go do it. Let, and, and, and here I am. And here you are, here's <laughs> here I am. Um, all right, let's get into the first wine. What I think I want to start with is uh, is the Gewürztraminer. Let's go over here. Grab your little. That's smoke. such a tongue twister. Gewürztraminer. Yeah. Gewürztraminer. It's a Gewürztraminer is a uh, Gewürztraminer is a is a tough one, no doubt. Say and it again. Gewürztraminer. That one. Gewürztraminer. You say it much better than I do. Now this is this more uh, 2006 Gewürz. Uh, we did have prior vintages of this on the show. Matt, you remember the California Gewürztraminer from Russian River, ironically. Russian River? But the grape varietal is most known for what it does in the Alsace in France. Um, and Alsace kitchen. Yes. So it's heavy food. Heavy food. But a lot of times um, what they would do is, this, you know, the, the aperitif, the one that they would have with the cheese in the beginning. But that's really where Gewürztraminer shines. Um, it does a little bit of damage in Germany, but these are really exciting wines for a lot of people in the U.S. from a Thai spicy component. However, I have found them to go very well with oily uh, kind of textures, and I've had a lot of mango, uh, mango avocado kind of like salad type stuff that I've done. I mean, is that kind of a dish, mango avocado salad? Because I, I actually mix it a ton, and I even turn it into tuna tacos with a... The salsa is the. I'm gonna get so the, hungry. The salsa. Yeah, listen, listen to the salsa. Mangoes, avocados. You mix it with a little bit of uh, cebolla larga, uh, not shallots, the long uh, green onions in, green. in stalks. Green onions, right? Okay. Sometimes I can't find my words in English. I can't either. And then, and then you do um, with some. Okay, we have the green onions, the long onions. The, the avocado, the mango, you mix it with some salt and pepper and some cilantro. Yep. And then you sear a tuna steak sushi quality, just like lightly like this, right. on the grill and leave it rare Shut inside, it nice and blue, into slices. And then separately, if you want to keep it really low fat, you take some Greek yogurt and you mix it with a little bit of garlic, with some lemon, and you put some chipotle, chile. Of course. <laughs> And done. Roll the whole thing up and get you your chavats. And drink one. it. And drink it. Nice. <laughs> well, give this a shot. Let's see what you think of this first, and then we'll have it with the mango and the avocado. I like the sugar cane on the nose. We're going stemless today, which is always rad. I love the stemless. It's so cool looking. You know, it kind of, and I know that this might sound really crazy, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like, the beginning when it enters, like sherry. Yeah, I, I, I get a little bit of that kind of sherry action. In the beginning. Yes, absolutely. And then it goes away very quickly. And then it goes away. And it goes into a lot of fruit. 
You get a little sugar cane, but do you get the spiciness on the back end? Yes, I do. Which I think is going to be the big key. So grab a little, what do we got, a little toothpicks here? Okay, I want to ask a question. Go ahead, fire away. Huh? This is clearly this already a three-part series. Do you alone. taste wines every day? Yes. Every day? Every day. And how does one get to taste wine every day and not, be, and not drink it all and become an alcoholic? What you do is you get a jet spit bucket. What's the fun then? Well, I mean, you asked the question. I mean, you, you know, you can go the alcoholic route. You're more than welcome. There's plenty of people doing it. Or you go the jet spit bucket range. I mean, it's really one or the other. That's like almost like saying, here, try this, and once you have to have half peas in your mouth, I'm spit pulling it out. It out. Let's try that. So, <laughs> with, but, but yeah, I mean, well, at the end of the day, you're able to, if you're tasting wine, for the sake of tasting, to evaluate it, by getting it to your mouth, having it there, and then spitting it out, it's very easy for you to pretty much figure out what you're tasting. Okay. So, I mean, from a technical standpoint, that's what we're doing. <laughs> but you'd prefer to drink it. Well, maybe but since a, there's so much, I'm actually so then. I spit this there, I got it well, in my mouth. I first. promise you, the baby max <laughs> right now are sitting there saying, drink, drink, drink. They couldn't wait for another 20 minutes from now to see how you're reacting after all this. You know? <laughs> but you put some cheese, so I need you to clear it. Drink the gaberts. Okay. Drink the gaberts. Okay. Again? Yes. So I put cheese. Yes. That's right. Okay. Drink the gaberts again. We're going to get a drunk mom. All right, now. Now okay. let's taste the avocado. But I need some more because I've got cheese in my mouth. Let's get the avocado and the mango. Let's team it up. Love those teams. Team it up. Okay. Team it up, Ma. <laughs> Do we Such get Ma drinks. drunk too? Ma's been, Ma's been getting more, more into wine. He really has. Right, Ma? What'd you say? <laughs> He's like, no. Okay. All right. And now the, the, the avocado or just yep. the mango? No, just both. Both. Get both. All right. Let it, let it cleanse your palate. Let it take over your palate, really. All right. Now, let's jump back into this more. It changes completely. Crazy, right? It changes completely. I now mean, it's that, much mellower, right? Much. Do you notice how that acidity, that's why I made a note of it. I'm like, you get the acid. Well, why does that happen? Because the fat is coating your tongue, and what happens is they just start pairing. I mean, this is the key of what wine ah. and food pairings are. This is the game that we play with ourselves, trying to find out what works with what. And so, there's a synergy there that I find quite compelling, because what we're left with, in my opinion, tell me if you feel this, is just a very silky kind of experience. It completely changed. It's a completely different wine. Blows my mind away. What? Did you like it better first or second? Second. Because it was smoother? Yeah. And that's how you had paired it. And yeah. I had made the mistake that I was eating this. Yes, we had to get you out of there. That's why, that's you why we it. made you. Okay, well, what can I tell you? It's okay, it's all right. Let's now, I want to ask you something else. Jump away. You know those little uh, magic, it was the magic wand, the crystal wand? That, that you put into the you bo put and then, bottle and to then, age it? Yeah, like when a, a wine is really young and it's got that yeah. very strong that you put yeah. it in there for three minutes and then it changes yeah. and it does change it. Yeah. Do you believe in that? No. It's <laughs> Ma, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to they that sold up. it really well to me. Um, I believe that it changes it because it's a chemical shift, but it doesn't age. You know, they, not age, but it does oh, change it changed, the flavor. But you could also change it another way. Okay, you go but outside. I, it wasn't just the margarine. You pick, up, you pick up. You pick up a penny, and you throw it in your wine. It's the copper. It's the metal reaction against the wine. Okay, I don't think that I would want to. Well, do you throw really believe? Did you, did you believe in the magic wand? Did you yeah. really believe that they went out and created the magic wand? Well, you, you wanted know, to believe. I, I'm a you girl after all. I want to believe. <laughs> you know? All right, let's move on to this. Let's go here because we're going to do an Albarino, okay. which you've had in the past, I'm sure, right? Which one? Albarino. The Albarino, which is one of my favorite wines. Give me the first one as well. The first one as well. Okay. Yeah, we'll use this one still. Um, rinse remember, I told rinse you that I love the rinse. Yeah, rinsey rinse. Rinsey, rinsey, rinsey. The Albariños from Rios Baixas. Which is what this is, where this is from, which is the okay. prime time. I mean, this is the. I know, what is the slang? RB. RB. See, now I'm gonna, next time. Yeah, I'm gonna be show, I'm RB. like, you know, do, do you have a great RB? And they're like, <laughs> they're like, like what I'm gonna be so that? show offing. I'm the new wine expert here. Uh, Zarate. It's 20 US bones. Albarino, 2004 vintage, so a little bit of age on this Albarino, where we're still seeing a lot more 2006s in the market. Uh, Zarate ages it a little bit longer, very big time producer, 
I've really enjoyed their wines in the past. 2003 was a little bit of a hit for me, a miss, excuse me, for me, but it was also extremely hot in 2003 in Europe, so the sugar levels got a little, it was just a little gloppy, but it'll be interesting for me to see what's going on with their 2004. In a case like the Albariños, for instance, what makes you drink an Albariño now, mm -hmm. and what makes you save an Albariño for collecting? Is 90, that a wine that you collect? No, 95 to 99% of Albariño you want to drink immediately. This one producer is probably one of the few cult producers, but I'll tell you, did you notice on the nose? Did you give it a, you gotta give it a sniffy sniff. As we said today, people are not smelling their wines out there enough. So I don't want you, Ingrid, to set a bad example because there's a lot of little girls out there watching right now who look up to you and they may not smell the wine quite as well. Okay, I want to smell it again. There you go. What do you think about the nose? What are you picking up? Anything? I smell strong alcohol. You do? At first. Okay. I get you said that this is a 2004. Yeah. So then Albariño's I get a very nutty kind of thing going on. You know, like on the back of the nose. And almost like, almost like motor shop. Like, 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 like <laughs> motor shop. <laughs> motor shop. I don't know. I taste, it tastes. And floral. It too. smells. Yes, floral too. Yeah, like acacia flower maybe. Let's give it a whirl. Let's okay. try it. You're smiling. I'm not gonna get made fun of, Ma. I mean, I. Plus, it's I really good. Pretty, pretty zesty. It is. This one is very strong as to the, compared when I've had the albariño that I had. No question. I mean, on the on the front end, there's a lot of acid. Are yes. you picking up a lot of acid? Totally. A crap load of acid. In the front and almost on the sides of the tongue. No question. Very dry. Very different kind of albariño. I agree. I think we're gonna it. It's got a lot of acid up front. It mellows out on the back end, almost like a straw meets like lemon custard kind of flavored on the back end of my palate, and finishes kind of interestingly. I think I'm gonna be really fascinated what pairs up here. Watch, go ahead. <coughs> the question is that if it's all from the same region, yep. why is one, would it be the year then? The year, the soil, the terroir, right? I mean, but it's the terrain is the same, it's the same region. Not really, the same. I mean, there's so many subterrains, right? I mean, think about olives, I mean, there's olives that are planted over here, olive trees, and then right over there, they're better olives. I mean, there's microclimates in all of these, you know, even AOCs within Burgundy, there's small microclimates. Okay. So this vineyard might have more, you know, capabilities to yeah. produce world-class wine. Okay. All right, so what do we have here? We have Spanish black olives, mm -hmm. green olives, mm -hmm. and then we've got a Oaxaca cheese, which Oaxaca. is Mexican. <laughs> it's a white, salty, type of cheese. The reason that I brought it, I generally don't eat Oaxaca on its own so much like that, but it is a cheese that is great for melting. So it's a cheese that you use in a lot of recipes. Got it. It's almost like a mozzarella. So, so what what uh what recipes do you use it with? Um anything that you want to melt. Uh it could be from a uh type of a Latin lasagna that you make with plantains and then you sprinkle the Oaxaca on top, any type of Mexican food that you want, melt cheese. It's a queso blanco, white cheese. Got it. And uh, you either have the crumbly kind that right. doesn't melt, yes. or you have the frying kind. This is the melting kind. Got it. So, so probably it's the one that I use the most. So let's take all three of these. Okay. Let's eat a green of a black of, and have the cheese. We don't have pit stamp. Here in our bucket, mm -hmm. <laughs> our trash bucket. Okay, green olive. Now, have them all. Let's get all the flavors in the mat, and then we're gonna have the albarino. The again. white and mm -hmm. the. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like fun. We're just like <laughs> eating and drinking. This is like the best show ever. No, you're getting I love to do this. <laughs> this is my favorite thing in life. And a bit of cheese. I have to tell you something. As I know this because women always ask me this. And even, I'm not a wine expert. I've learned a little bit along the years, obviously, mm -hmm. because I love food. Mm -hmm. We women are very intimidated by ordering wine. Not only the women, but the men. I mean, men too. There's, just a, there's an enormous intimidation around wine globally. There's a very low wine self-esteem. That's really why I started the show. I want people to trust their own palate. It really comes down to just exploring. 
right? Yeah, it's I mean, what you it, like. It's the same food. I mean, how do you know if you like a green olive or a black olive if you've never had them? And that's exactly. where it's all about. That's all right, true. now that we have the salt and cheese mm -hmm. in our mouth, let's get back to the albarino. I'm gonna smell my albarino. Make sure you watch me smell. Yes, please, <laughs> give it a sniffy sniff. You guys have seen me smell, right? I smelled. Okay, now I get to drink. <laughs> completely changed too. Every wine, actually, you know what? Have it's a black olive right now and then try one right away. Again, what you're looking for is flavors that match up and create a synergy in your mouth instead of two different things going on. And what happens here clearly is it that- It tastes like the olive. Yeah, and then, and then it lifts the white wine to me. You know, it, it, the acidity on the front end after the black mm -hmm. olive goes away quite a bit. Um, to me, this albedino is extremely high in acid on the front end and would probably turn off a lot of people. Um, where this more converts is probably an 88, 89 point wine. This albedino, with it, it's, it, it's, it's well made, but I think the acid on the front end is a little disjointed, kind of disappointed in the albedino. What do you think about it? I actually think it really, really changed. And before that, it was in the tip of my tongue and on the sides, and now it was in the middle back. Right. I'm going to switch my wrist. Art to, to the, the other hand. hand. This is the hand I drink with. <laughs> this is the hand I need support in. <laughs> Let me grab your glass. Chief, I feel my eyes are starting to get little already. I throw this out. Out. <laughs> Must I? <laughs> okay, whatever. 